Hello everyone, Miss Turney here with your literacy video for Wednesday, May 6, 2020. And today, in honor of the third day of Spirit Week, I am tipping my hat to all of my hardworking scholars. Nice job. I hope everybody is doing so well today. I'm wondering if you can take a minute, think, 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 what was your favorite thing you've eaten all week long? Your favorite bite to eat that you've had? Mine was cupcakes. I made cupcakes from scratch and they tasted so yummy. I'm wondering what your favorite thing was. Nice. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into our video for today. For this video, you will need to open a new tab and go to our seahorse video. I've linked the seahorse video in our Google Classroom. You can also find it by going to this link right here. So please go listen to the book one more time to refresh your memory for today's lesson. I'll meet you back here when you are done. Excellent. I just love the music in the background of that video. So the first thing we're going to do is define the word shyest. We're going to think about what that word means by looking for clues in our story. Here is what our story says. It is hard to see the seahorse because it is hiding. The seahorse is by itself watching other fish. The seahorse blends in and is hard to see. The seahorse is by himself. It is far away from other fish. These are all different sentences that I put together about the word shyest. These are details that can help us find the meaning. Did you notice anything about the word shyest? Have you seen that word before? Are there any words hidden inside of it? So right now, you are thinking about the outside in strategy. Think about the words that the text says and then think about the inside of the word shyest. What do all of these details show us? Take a moment and just think to yourself. If you need more time, pause the video, but I'm going to explain how I use the outside in strategy to help me define the word shyest. So let's start with the outside. These are the words outside of the word shyest, meaning these are the different words in the text that I can use to help me figure out what it means. It's hard to see the seahorse because it is hiding. Hmm, the seahorse is by himself, by itself watching other fish. By itself, it's far away from other fish. Hmm, okay, so he's hard to see, he's hiding, he's by itself, it's far away from other fish. Okay, now look, let's look inside the word shyest. I see a word that I know, shy. Okay, so go ahead scholars and fill in the blank. Shyest means what? If you need more time, you can always pause. Ist at the end of the word shy means most. So the word shyest means the most shy. So you can write these words on the line or write the whole sentence shyest means the most shy. Go ahead and take some time to get those down. The next thing we're going to do is play a little game. Okay. We're going to play a game with the suffix est, E-S-T. Remember, est means most. I have a set of classroom objects with different sizes. I'm using pens. In my video, I'm going to model how to use est, E-S-T, to tell the difference between the objects, okay? All of these pens are pretty long. I've got this one, 
actually I'm gonna make my screen bigger. There we go. I've got this one. I've got a green pen right here. Green pen. I've got the black and silver pen. And I've got an orange pen. We're gonna think about which one is the shortest or the longest. Notice how I'm saying EST at the end, EST. So that's the suffix that we're using. So I'm gonna line them up in order of shortest to longest. So I have this one right here, which is my shortest pen. The green one's a little bit longer than it. Line up those endpoints. Miss Javity would be proud. And then I'm gonna put this orange one right next to the green one as the longest. So this orange pen is the longest. Can you say longest? Longest. This black and silver pen is the shortest. Can you say shortest? Shortest. Good. So this one is the most long and this one is the most short. Shortest, longest. Good job practicing with the suffix E-S-T. Now you can look around your room and find things that are longest or shortest. You might pause the video and pull out a straw and this might be the longest object that you have. Or you might pull out a scrunchie and realize this is the shortest object that you have. Go ahead and try that game now. Excellent. Now we're going to think about the key details in our text. Good readers look for clues about what the book is mostly about. That's our main topic. We've been practicing this with all of our texts so far. Anson Grasshopper, Me Jane, and now we're gonna do it with Seahorse, the shyest fish in the sea. So the first thing you're gonna do is think about key details. Can you say key details? You can say that louder, try again. Nice. And so you're gonna fill in the blank for some of these key details. And then we're gonna think about what they all have in common so that we can find the main topic. First one, the seahorse blank his body and blends into his surroundings. Think back to the text or think back to yesterday's vocabulary. What means blending into your surroundings? It's a long word that starts with a C. If you need more time, you can pause the video. I'm gonna show you here. The seahorse can camouflage his body and blend into his surroundings. You can find the word camouflage right here. Camouflage, it's spelled really sneakily. So let's make sure we have it spelled right. This, the seahorse can camouflage his body and blends into his surroundings. You can also write the seahorse camouflages his body. Go ahead and pause the video, take some time to write that down. Nice. Next one. Seahorses can hold still and change what? To avoid being eaten by other fish. They can change from brown to green to orange. What can they change? They can change color to avoid being eaten by other fish. Another detail I learned is that they have bony blank that makes them hard to swallow. What do we think goes in the blank here? Bony what? You might need to go all the way back to your text and pause my video to think about what the text says they have on their body. Bony what? My turn. Bony ridges. 
that make them hard to swallow. So you don't wanna eat anything with that many pokey ridges. It would be really hard to get down your throat. Okay, all this information that we just talked about, that's key details about seahorses. And let's put them all together. What do they have in common? This is like list group label. All of them are about seahorses. They all tell us about the seahorse's body and that seahorses can hide from other fish. They change color, they camouflage, and they have bony ridges, so it's all about protection. All of these details show the main topic of this section. This is the main topic. So I have summarized these responses to make this main topic. Seahorses have ways to avoid being eaten. That's how they protect themselves. And if you need help, avoid means to keep from happening or prevent. So this is my teacher brain coming up with this main topic for these details that we plugged in. So I showed you what I would do for that section of the text. Now you are gonna do it with me and you are gonna help me by putting some details together. So now it's your turn. I'm gonna read this paragraph to you and you are going to fill in the blanks. When seahorses dance together, their colors change so that they, so they match. I learned that only the blank seahorse can have babies. Think back to the text, which one had the babies? Write it in in the blank. The baby seahorses look like adult seahorses, but are very what? Fill it in in the blank. I learned that baby seahorses are in the mom slash dad's pouch for a few weeks. So you're gonna circle either mom's pouch or you are going to circle dad's pouch. You are picking one. What do all of these details have in common? So take some time now, pause the video, fill in the blank. What do all of these details talk about? Once you're done, we are gonna discuss the main topic of this section. Welcome back. So I noticed that all of these details have a lot in common. They're all about babies and what the babies look like and how they have the babies. So I think it's about how seahorses have babies. You can write that down on this line or if you wrote something similar, nice job, silent excitement for you. Okay. This time you are gonna do this next section completely on your own. What can baby seahorses do after they are born? Go ahead and read these sentences on your own, fill in the blank, and find the main topic of the section. Oh, there's the line that snuck down here. So read the sentences, fill in the blank, think about what they all have in common, and then write down the main topic of the section on the line. Pause the video now. I'll meet you back here when you're done. Excellent job. You did that all by yourself. Now we have our main topics chart. This would, is what Miss Rossi or Miss Shoney would normally write in colorful markers and put on the board. So now we have all of our main topics. Seahorses use their bodies to avoid being eaten. Seahorses mate and give birth to baby seahorses. And baby seahorses have ways to survive as soon as they are born. And these are all different drawings that you could make to show each of the topics. Go ahead and draw little mini drawings in the chart so that it will help you remember the main topics. You do not need to think about this part of the chart. This part of the chart right here is only if you have the exact book, and I don't think that you have the book, so you don't need to focus on this part. And with that, you are done. All we needed to think about was the main topic of the seahorse story. So excellent job today. I can't wait to see you back here for tomorrow's video where we are going to be wearing some sports gear. I'll meet you back here tomorrow. Excellent job finding the key details and main topic.